Okay, time for more riddles, the parents' edition. There are three categories of questions. Easy, which award one point each, average for two points, and hard for three points. We're going to start with the easy ones. Remember, every correct answer gives you one point. Jason and Steven are home alone with their kids. Jason is talking to his mother, and Steven is watching a baseball game on the TV. Who's being negligent? Jason. Although both babies might fall out the window and both dads should watch out, Jason's baby is on the higher floor. Whoops. Mila and Gregor cook dinner for their kids. Which one of them is uh, <clears throat> the most confused? Mila. She accidentally mixed up the plates. She gave the dog her daughter's food and is about to feed her daughter dog food. Yum! Sabrina and her son went to the mountains to spend the day sliding. Adam is barbecuing in the backyard while watching his daughter. Who's not watching their child properly? Sabrina. Her son is sliding right into a big hole in the ice. Rebecca and Natalie took their kids to the lake. The boys are about to jump from the cliff. Whose child is in danger? Natalie's. There's rocks under the cliff her son is about to jump from. Megan and Rachel were cleaning their kids' rooms. Rachel noticed her son's phone and decided to check it. And Rachel found her daughter's diary. Who's in trouble? Rachel. It's bad to read a child's personal things. But she's also going to be busted because her daughter is about to walk into the room. (laughs) Mary and her son are spending time on the beach. Chris and his children are watching a TV. Which parent is doing something wrong? Mary. It's dangerous for anyone to be in the water during thunderstorms. Now we're moving to harder questions. Every correct answer awards two points. Meredith is teaching her daughter to do her makeup. Beverly is teaching her teenager to style her hair. Which mom is doing something wrong? Beverly. The hair straightener isn't plugged in. Nicole and Diana are spending time with their kids. Nicole is reading to her son, and Diana is watching cartoons with her daughter. Who is not behaving wisely? Nicole. She forgot about the food that she's cooking in the oven, and it's burning. So it's going to be takeout tonight. Bradley and Ryan's sons are blamed for painting a face on a neighbor's fence. Both boys denied doing it, and both fathers believe their sons. Who's been misled? Ryan. His son still has green paint on his hands that he couldn't properly wash off. Jennifer went for a walk with her son, but she got distracted talking on the phone. Mark left his daughter in a closed car while he entered a store to buy garden tools. Who has made a bigger mistake? Mark. It's dangerous to leave people or animals in a closed car, especially in the heat, when the car warms up very fast and there's a lack of fresh air inside. Brian is teaching his teen son how to drive. And Nancy is cooking a dinner with her daughter. Who isn't being wise?
Brian. Nancy's daughter seems to be old enough to cut an apple, especially under supervision. But Brian can't control all of his son's actions in the car. Martha and her son went to the jungle, and she stopped to take some selfies. Peter took his son camping, and he's setting up the tent while his son is trying to light a fire. Who's not being smart? Martha. Her baby is approaching a snake that can be venomous. Melissa and Stephanie are doing chores. Melissa is handling the laundry, and Stephanie is cleaning the kitchen. Who should be more careful? Stephanie. Her daughter put her cell phone in a dishwasher. Tiffany and Michael's sons came back home after a study evening at their friend's house. Neither parents are suspicious. However, someone's son wasn't studying tonight. Who overlooked a party guy? Tiffany. Her son has a lipstick stain on his collar. Jack and Vivian took their kids to school. Now Jack is walking to work, and Vivian is driving to a store. Who forgot something? Jack. He's still wearing his daughter's pink school backpack. Looking good, Jack! Charles and Penelope cooked breakfast for their kids. Which parent probably didn't get much sleep the previous night? Penelope. She gave her daughter a raw potato and didn't even peel it. Sandra is doing gardening with her daughter. George is watching his child swimming in a pool. Who's being stupid? George. He fell asleep and left his son in the pool unsupervised. What's more, the boy took off his armbands and can drown. Uh Uh-oh. Elizabeth and John's daughters came home. They said they were doing a group science project, and both parents believed their daughters. Who didn't detect a lie? John. His daughter is wearing a sweater on a hot day so she could be hiding something. Jessica and Aaron cooked a dinner for their families. Jessica cooked Thai soup, and Aaron made mashed potatoes. Who is a bad cook? Jessica. Her daughter poured her soup in a flower pot. Travis didn't let his daughter go to her friend's birthday party and told her to do her homework all day. Christina's son had to spend the day in his bedroom, too, instead of going to the movies. When the teenagers came down to dinner at 7 o'clock, which parent didn't notice they're being lied to? Travis. It's raining, and his daughter has wet hair. It means she was outside and not sitting in her bedroom. And finally, the hardest questions for three points each. Dustin is cooking dinner with his daughter. Joseph is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who isn't smart? Joseph. Lawnmowers are very dangerous machines and should never be used if there are kids around. Sean is teaching his little son how to chop wood. Camilla is listening to music and washing the dishes while her baby is sleeping upstairs. Who's making a mistake? Camilla. The music is too loud and she won't hear if her son wakes up and cries. 
Brandon and Daniel are watching their kids playing in the backyard. Who's not being wise? Daniel. His son is playing in the sunshine without a hat on and might get sunstroke. Pamela is getting ready for the meeting with her son's teacher at 12 o'clock. William is driving his son to a birthday party. Who isn't very attentive? Pamela. She must have confused the time. The meeting was at 12 o'clock, but it's already 1.30. Thomas is reading a newspaper while watching his son. Molly is talking on the phone while dinner is cooking in the oven. Who should rethink their actions? Molly. She forgot to turn on the oven. Samantha and Bob are sending their kids on a school field trip. Which of the parents forgot to do something? Bob. Why is he holding his son's lunch? The kid is not eating today. Sum up your points to check your results. If you got 25 points or less, you scored below average. But don't worry, check some of our other riddles to train for the next time. If you got 26 to 45, you have an average result. Keep it up. If you got between 46 to 60 points, you have an above average result and you definitely are a riddles master. And finally, if you have 61 or more, you're a real genius. Or you're on your second or third time watching this video. Come on, fess up. Uh-oh. Allie was missing for days when her husband Orson called the police to report it. Detective Wells arrived at the scene and found her purse buried in the garden. Inside, there was a note that read, It's a sign. You're mine. I redesign your new life. The police had three suspects with unusual names. Orson, her husband, Ryan, her best friend, and Atlas, her brother. Who took Allie? It was rhyme. Almost all the words in the note rhyme with his name. While driving in a storm, John saw three people standing in the rain at the bus stop. But he only had one seat available in his car. Who gets the ride? His childhood friend, an old lady that looks like she's freezing, or his wife? John asks his childhood friend to drive the old lady to the hospital and then take the car back to his house. And John himself will wait for the bus with his wife. Mark is locked in a 30-foot tall cell with an earthen floor and a window near the ceiling. There's nothing else in his room but a shovel and a bed. The entrance is blocked with concrete. How can he get out? Mark can shovel the soil to the wall underneath the window and climb out. Detective Jones was called one day by Border Control about a suspicious pickup truck. Every day, the vehicle went back and forth between two countries with a large sack in the back of its truck bed. When the detective opened the sack, it was filled with sand. What was the driver smuggling? Trucks. A geography teacher vanished on the first day of school. When the police arrived, they suspected four people who claimed to have alibis. The landscaper was mowing the front lawn. The English teacher was giving students a surprise test. The principal was preparing for his welcoming speech. And the coach was meeting new students who wanted to join the football team. Who was lying?
the English teacher. Of course! <laughs> Students don't get surprise tests on the first day. Well, maybe not at this school. <laughs> A crazy scientist took 10 people into his lab to check their intelligence. He gave everyone two pills and a glass of water. He told them, one pill is a placebo and the other is poison. Whichever you take, I'll take. But somehow everyone ended up unconscious after the trial except for the scientist. How did he do it? Both pills were placebo. The poison was in the water. Shane and Mia went to Japan for their honeymoon. Only Shane came back, and Mia's family called the best detective in town. What should be the detective's first move? Inspect Shane's suitcase. Inspect Shane's house. Call the travel agency Shane and Mia used. Call the agency to see how many return tickets Shane had booked. He's a suspect, and he shouldn't know the police are investigating him to avoid losing the evidence. Someone knocked on Amy's hotel room door. When she opened it, she saw a mysterious man. He apologized and said he'd mistaken Amy's room for his. When he left, Amy called the police. Why? Nobody knocks on the door of their own room. This is a technique used by people who want to break into someone's home. A worker was found unconscious near the entrance of an abandoned building. He has no memory of what happened, but seems to have fallen from the building. Detective Marks is assigned to this case, and he must figure out whether the worker fell or was pushed. He goes to the first floor, opens the window, and throws out a small rock. He does the same on the second floor and all the way to the top. When the detective comes back down, he's sure the worker was pushed. How does he know? He had to open the windows on all floors to throw out rocks. This was an abandoned building, and someone closed the window right after pushing the worker. James ordered a coffee from his local bakery, put in some sugar, but then noticed a fly in his cup. He told the staff member, and they took back the coffee and brought him a new one. But when he got a sip, he got angry. Why? His new coffee was already sweetened. The staff member only removed the fly. Tom was walking in a snowy park at 10 p.m. when he got attacked from behind. He didn't see who knocked him out, and he immediately went to the police. The detectives questioned four suspects. Adam said he was at a suit fitting for his dinner later. Daniel said he was hosting a party at his place. Susan said she was working out before going to work. And Luke said he went to the park to get some cool photos of flying birds. One of them is lying. Who? It's Luke. It's next to impossible to see birds at night in winter. Right before the final soccer match, the team's goalkeeper went missing. The police arrived and they had three suspects from the rival team. Mike said he was signing autographs for his friends. Jake said he had broken his ankle and he was getting a massage. John was training at the gym before the match. The police immediately knew who did it. It was Jake. You don't get a massage when you break your ankle. A doctor walked into an unconscious patient's ward. There, he saw a nurse buttoning up her shirt. As soon as she noticed him, she exclaimed, It's not what you think! The nurse isn't lying, but why was her shirt unbuttoned in the first place?
she got locked out of the changing room and knew that the patient was unconscious. So she went to his ward to change into her uniform. Yeah, I believe her. A group of six friends decided to check out an abandoned house in their neighborhood. When they arrived, Mark, one of the group, warned his friends not to go in. But all of them ignored him and walked in anyway. Mark stayed outside, but his friends never came out. Mm-hmm. What did he see that stopped him from going into the house? There were footprints going in, but none coming out. Detective Stevenson is taken by some of his mean supervisors who want to test his intelligence. They put him in a room with two doors. One leads to freedom, while the other opens onto a bottomless pit. There are two guards, either responsible for one door. One of them always tells the truth, while the other always lies. Stevenson doesn't know who's the honest one, and he can only ask one question to one of them. What should the question be to save his life? If I ask the security guard next to you which door leads to freedom, what will he say? The honest guard will say that the liar will point to the dangerous door. The liar will point to that one too. No matter who Stevenson asks, he should pick the door neither of them will point at. Melissa is walking down a dark alley when she notices a dark figure following her. She walks into a restaurant and sits at a table. The mysterious figure does the same. Then she yawns and immediately knows she's got a stalker. How? When she looked up, the mysterious figure was also yawning. It means they had been watching her. The director of a large company was found unconscious in his office. The police showed up, saw the messy office, and realized that a fight had gone down. They went to his secretary and asked to see the list of visitors that day. Immediately, they knew who did it. How? The last visitor was the culprit. During the fight, the wall clock also stopped because it got hit. It showed the exact time the last appointment took place. Sarah wanted to get some money from her brother for a house. She couldn't tell him the truth and asked him for an expensive gift. After a week, her brother gave her a glamorous tiara. Then she went to her second brother, asked for money, but he gave her jewelry. Still, she's got both money and jewelry. How is it possible? She asked for a similar jewelry item and sold one of them. Susie went on a dating website and found three guys that she liked, all with some very impressive backgrounds. But only one of them is telling the truth. Can you guess which one? Shane said he was an astronaut. He went to Mars and enjoyed a beautiful sunset. Chris said he was a scientist and went to the North Pole. He enjoyed being on floating ice and seeing both arctic foxes and penguins. Dylan said he was a pilot, and once he flew his helicopter so fast, he broke the sound barrier. Shane is telling the truth. The sunset on Mars is blue. There are no penguins in the North Pole, and helicopters can't travel faster than the speed of sound. Oh, and yes, we'll also ignore the fact that no one's been to Mars yet. Susie also thinks Shane has beautiful eyes, so who are we to disrupt this love connection? Let's see if you know famous logos well. I removed the names from all of them. How many do you think you can recognize? Let's start with some easy ones. You must have this one on your phone. What is it? This is Instagram, of course. 
It's the fourth most popular social media platform in the world with over a billion active users. Here comes the next one. I bet you get childhood flashbacks now, but what's this castle? It's a bit old school, but I'm sure you managed to recognize it. It's Walt Disney Pictures. Do you remember whom this sign belongs to? This is Batman, of course. Who's your favorite superhero? You must know this one. So do you have an answer? Of course, it's Tesla. Just two circles, but I'm sure you know it. And you probably have one. It's MasterCard. Does this one ring a bell? Gamers will know instantly, though. This is Xbox. Moving on, what's this sign? It's Toyota, a popular Japanese car brand. Do you still ever watch TV? If so, you should have no problem recognizing this one. It's Cartoon Network, a TV channel. What do you think this is? I have a thing for Japanese cars today. It's Mitsubishi. Moving on from car brands, what is this company? It's Chanel's logo. By the way, Coco isn't Chanel's real name. Her real name is Gabrielle Chanel. Coco was her childhood nickname. When you see it, you know you'll definitely enjoy the next two hours. What is it? Of course, it's the Warner Brothers logo. So many great movies. Looks very familiar, but what exactly is it? It's Sprite. It's the fifth best-selling soft drink on the market. This one is way harder to recognize, so I'll give you a hint. It's a soft drink, too. Yeah, right. It's Dr. Pepper. It's the sixth best-selling drink, going right after Sprite. Another way to spend a great evening. What is this company? It's DreamWorks. What about this purple logo? It's Yahoo. I don't think there's a person out there who doesn't know what this is. It's Hogwarts logo, the school of witchcraft and wizardry from the Harry Potter universe. Back to our non-magical world. What's this company? It's Amazon. The company started out in 1995 as a garage bookstore, by the way. Do you know what this is? It's the PlayStation logo. Does this one ring a bell? It definitely should. It's Monopoly. Also, for some reason, this game has thousands of special editions. Huh? What's that song? Ask Shazam! Even if you're not a gamer, you can probably recognize this. It's The Sims, a life simulator game that was a real hit in the 2000s. It's a new logo, but I think you must know it by now. It's Meta. It's the new name of Facebook Incorporated. They own Instagram and WhatsApp, too. Not as popular as Facebook, but you might know this app. Or ask someone from Gen Z. It's Discord, a messenger. 
Originally, it was used by gamers, but now there's more users building their communities of interests. Okay, what's this? Yeah, I'm back to car brands again. This is Ferrari. Can you recognize this sign and to whom it belongs? It's Wonder Woman. If you're a traveler, you know it all too well. It's Airbnb, an online marketplace for logic. It's a bit old school, but still everyone's favorite. That's Discovery Channel. It's pretty hard, but you know it very well, I'm sure. It's Walmart. What do these two letters stand for? It's Baskin Robbins, a worldwide ice cream brand. Even without the name, it's still recognizable. So, what do you say? It's Doritos. Hmm, a tricky one. I'll give you a little hint. It has to do with clothes. It's Jack Wolfskin, a German manufacturer of quality outdoor clothes. Not so mainstream, but you've seen it a million times. That's Nestle. You must love all things luxury if you have one of those. That's Rolex, a Swiss watch designer. Can you recognize this logo? That's Tommy Hilfiger, an American clothing brand. What about this one? It might seem hard, but I'm sure you'll know it. That's Nintendo Switch. What does this O stand for? This is Opera, a web browser. For fellow oldies, this brings back so many memories. It's ICQ. And if you're from Gen Z, it's a messenger. That's what we used in the olden dinosaur days before Discord, or even WhatsApp was invented. What is this panda bear? World Wildlife Fund, or WWF. That's an international non-governmental organization working on preserving wildlife. You should know it well if you travel a lot. Toblerone, known by many as the airport chocolate. Do you know what this company is? It's the logo of the World Health Organization. 